Ew, what were you doing out here? Anyway, today this is the uh, uh, clutch master cylinder out of my truck. Um, uh, it's a hydraulic cylinder setup or hydraulic clutch setup. Uh, this is the input for the, it runs off the brake fluid, so there's just a rubber hose that runs to here and uh, puts the brake fluid in the cylinder. Uh, and then the output is here. So you step, hopefully there's no more fluid in here. A uh, little bit. You step here and uh, it pushes the fluid out and uh, that's about it. Uh, causes the clutch to actuate or the, well, the slave cylinder to actuate which moves the shift fork, not the shift fork, the, uh, the fork, the clutch something or other fork. Uh, and uh, Pushes on the pressure plate, yada, 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 Rude Goldberg machine, and uh, actuates the clutch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart real quick and uh, see uh, see what's going on in there. So I'm going to take it over to the vise. Uh, i got to break this nut loose here. Actually, I might not, might not have to go to the vise for that. What am I saying? I can do that right here. It's probably a 13. Hey, look at that. It's like I've done this before. All right, so this is the piece that attaches to the pedal. Uh, there's just a pin that's held in by, uh, I guess, like a cotter key, for lack of a better term. Um, kind of similar to, to the kind of deal that's, uh, that's on here. Just a pin with a, uh, uh, with a key on it or a cotter pin, whatever you call these things. It was the same type of deal on here. 13 millimeter nut. Uh, so this is on the inside of the truck, right? From here back is on the inside of the truck. So this this would just be a dust boot of some kind. Uh, let's see, there is an interesting spring thingy in there that is holding this all together. I should say the reason that I replaced this is it was squeaking like crazy, and it was just driving me up the wall. These things are only like 30 bucks, so eh, what the heck, right? But all right, so we got to get that spring out of there. That was exciting. Yeah, I'm always making a mess. All right, all right, moving along. Well, that spring is, oh, nope, nope, there it is. Okay, so we got a little ball joint here that's pressing on this plastic valve. Looks like there's some uh, molybdenum disulfide grease on there, whatever it is, yeah. Kind of looks like it. You can see how it's kind of shiny. There's something in there. Anyway, so this part would be more than likely just uh, maybe like a zinc coated steel. Yeah, you can see it's worn through there. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you can see it's worn through there. So it's just a zinc coated steel. Just like a standard bolt you would get. Not a bad part. I mean, it'd be nice to see it made out of something a little a little harder than that I don't know anyway so here's the cylinder all right so what's going on here is okay okay I see I see all right so when you push down on this this guy's gonna shuttle over and it's gonna prevent any back pressure right so we've got this tapered o-ring which is only gonna be stopping pressure in this direction but it would allow anything to go in that direction. And then a tapered O-ring in this direction, which is obviously stopping the fluid from going out in that direction. Now, my big question is, what the heck is this thing on here for? So, I guess we're going to have to throw the old dick in the vise and reef on her to get her off. Oh, one more thing here. Got a roll pin holding this guy in. Everything's a hammer except a screwdriver, and that's a pry bar. Come on. All right. 
we're gonna have to want to do this the hard way all right we got her most of the way apart anyway I guess it really doesn't matter since we're tearing this thing to bits and it's going in the, the round file all right so you got a nice little rubber maybe bunan it's got two lips there kind of an interesting little seal there we got okay so there is a hole there i don't know if you can see that pick is sticking down through there which is interesting because i all i know i know okay okay so that is a back pressure um uh so let, let me see if i can explain this here so this guy is sitting on here, right? This guy is down in the hole. So there's some flaring action kind of happening as well as some compression action happening as far as sealing goes. So normally this is kind of flared out a little bit and just the, the pressure from this pipe and the side of the walls pushing in is keeping that seal taut, right? Or tight, whatever. Then, if you step on this uh, cylinder and it pressurizes, if for any reason it pressurizes back through here, the, uh, this is a much bigger hole than this orifice. So what that's going to do is that's going to actually allow fluid to slide up behind the seal here. And it's going to force it to pressurize in behind there. Now why? I see that that's what that's doing. Because this is a hole as well. I don't know if I have anything that's thin enough. Ah, I just put the valve in backwards. Never fear. Needle nose pliers are here. Son of a... Well, good luck getting that thing out of there. I think it suctioned itself in. So hopefully when I break this off, uh, that'll break the uh, tension. But anyway, back to this uh, this here. So why would you want to do that? I guess, because I mean, I guess there's some tension here as well, pushing down with that roll pin. See if I can get that roll pin out, get some idea of how much tension there really is. Jeez, it's almost like they didn't want it to come out. All right. So back here, this is just a stop. So yeah, there wouldn't be that much pressure on top of here. But it would be, that hole would be, yeah, on the back side of that shuttle valve. I really wish I could get that back out of there. Let me see if I can get it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this piece off and then we'll see, see what we got. I don't know if that's going to be a metric fitting or inch. It's probably metric. We'll go with the metric side. It's neither. It's too big. All right. Oh. I have no idea what the fuck that is. An accumulator, maybe, of some sort? All right. Had to result, resort to the old uh, whole uh, borer thingamabobber there to get this guy out. There we go, finally. All right, so we're trying to get some idea of where this guy sits when it's just uh, sitting still so all right all right so you can see here that in the normal position this hole would be probably just behind this back seal so when you push down it's actually going to push up and it's going to pressurize the back of the seal and cause it to to uh you know seal up around here and I guess the amount of face or the amount of surface area you've got here with this chamfer and the top here is going to keep it from squirting out the top. 
And even if it does squirt out at the top, that's about the best place you could have it leak because it's not going inside the cabin uh, like it would be here. Uh, or it's going, you know, the other way. Which, what you want it to do is you want it to force all the fluid, you know, that way. You don't want it popping out this end, right? So that kind of makes sense, I guess. So, huh. Man, I'm going to have to get into this. I guess, uh... Ooh, there's goo in it. That's always good. I don't know. Dare we cut it this way and see what happens? See if it explodes on us? Or... What? You don't have a lathe in your garage? Well, this is actually a fairly recent addition to my, uh, my tool collection here. I'm still kind of learning how to use it, but this is kind of... An excellent job to uh, give her a go with. We don't have nearly enough light here, do we? Let me uh, let me see if I can solve that problem. Ah, that's a little better. All right, so I don't know. Might be enough to do it. We'll give her give her a go. All right, got neutral. Part of the problem is here my tools are not, I, I need to get this lantern pulse tool holder is designed for high speed steel and I bought these carbide bits and they just don't quite work with the high speed steel S or with the uh, with the rake angle that's on. So I guess let's change out to some high speed steel and see if it does any better. I don't really want to touch that because that's going to be hot. Yeah, that'll probably work. We shall see. Yeah, and the short list of tools here is a uh, a better tool holder because this thing, uh, you know, cutting edge 1960s technology or whatever, probably 1930s technology, is not that great. All right, let's try this again. pieces off whatever it is all right that's gonna be nice and hot so we will probably actually it's not that bad all right to the bench well actually to the bench all right, so she's still a little warm. Ow. What if I go like this? All right, I'm going to put this in the vise and give her a whack. All right, well, in a spot of poor planning, I didn't put anything underneath this. Uh, I heard something go spring and spring and off into the distance, so I'll probably find it in a couple years. But, um, yeah, I don't know where the heck it went. It's a mess over there. Anyway, uh, this piece came off. It looks like, I mean, I see a seal here. Yeah, so this, this must be an accumulator of some kind so uh probably a hydraulic accumulator to help shuttle the um this guy back in the right direction i mean it's got this mechanical spring but there's gonna be probably some suction force uh when you push this thing down you know anytime you slide anything down a tube with some fluid or moisture know what i'm saying know what i'm saying there's a little bit of suction action happening eh eh uh, yeah, so that's prop. That's all it is. It's just an accumulator. So there must have been a spring sitting in here, or possibly all the way around the outside. That's possible too. I wonder if there's any evidence of where it was sitting. Interesting. Cool. So, yep, little accumulator. 
So uh, there you go. Guess I can throw it in the garbage now, now that we've seen how it worked. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Much better.